Here we are believing the word of God, hearing the word of God, obeying the word of God. We are building on the rock by obeying the word and God allows our faith to be tested. Are you building your life on the rock of Jesus Christ? That's the question Warren Wearsby asks on today's Back to the Bible. We're glad you're listening. All this week, we're enjoying some of the most popular messages from Back to the Bible's 75 years of broadcasting the truth of God's Word. Last week, we heard from our founder, Dr. Theodore Epp. And this week, we hear from the Bible teacher who followed him, Warren Wearsby. Warren is a beloved pastor and prolific author whose 80 plus books have inspired and guided the church around the world for decades. We were blessed to have him as our teacher from 1980 to 1990. And we're blessed to hear from him again today as he teaches about rocks and storms from his pictures and parable series. Here's Warren Wearsby in Matthew chapter seven. And now let's pause to pray. Gracious Father, we pray that as we study the Word of God, you will remind us of old truths and you'll teach us new truths and you'll put the two together so that we will make progress in our Christian life today. We're grateful for the freedom we have to do this, the freedom to broadcast. And we do pray for all who are in authority today that you will watch over them, give them wisdom to know what is right and give them the courage to do what is right. We ask your blessing now upon our study of the Word. Help us to practice it, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. When the Lord Jesus came to the end of what we call the Sermon on the Mount, he did what every faithful preacher ought to do. He called for a decision. Starting in chapter seven, verse 13, our Lord is wrapping up his sermon and telling everybody, you've got to make a decision. You cannot be neutral. He says in verses 13 and 14 of Matthew 7, there are only two ways. You can't be on both of them or in between. In verses 15 through 20, he says there are only two kinds of trees, good trees that bear good fruit, bad trees that bear bad fruit. You can't be indifferent or neutral. You've got to be one or the other. And then in verses 21 through 29, he says there are only two kinds of buildings, one is built on the sand and one is built on the rock, and you cannot have both. It's got to be one or the other. Therefore, you'd better make your decision. It's impossible to be neutral. There are two ways you've got to make a choice. There are two trees. Only one bears good fruit. There are two houses. Only one stands in the storms of life. Now, this decision is serious because at the end of the broad way is destruction, and the bad tree is cast into the fire, and the house without a foundation falls and is ruined. When I was a lad in school, we had to learn a poem. I didn't understand it then. I think I understand it better today. It's just a little piece of poetry that you teach children, but oh, what it says. Isn't it strange that princes and kings and clowns that caper in sawdust rings and common people like you and me are builders for eternity. Each is given a bag of tools, a shapeless mass, a book of rules, and each must make ere life is flown a stumbling block or a stepping stone. In verse 21, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, 
and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You see, in this passage, our Lord is warning us about self-deception. Uh, for example, in verses 13 and 14, he talks about the two ways, and he says, this decision you made for salvation, did it cost you anything? Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Did it cost you anything to become a Christian? Now, we know it cost our Lord for us to become Christians. He had to be born in this earth. He had to live on this planet, and he was persecuted. He had to be crucified. He was raised from the dead. It cost him that we might have salvation. But you see, there are people who are walking on this broad road, the popular way, the, the easy way, and they think they're saved. They think they're going to heaven, but the broad road leads to destruction. When you're saved, you leave the broad road. It might mean leaving some of your friends who are going on that broad road. Try to witness to them before that happens, however. You enter into a narrow gate where you deny yourself. You enter into a narrow road where there's a price to pay. And uh, Jesus says this way is not popular. It's lonely. It's the minority, not the majority. By the way, where is that narrow road? Is it running alongside the broad road? No, it's running right down the middle of the broad road. And as you and I are walking on this narrow road that leads to life, we're surrounded by people on the broad road who are going to destruction, and they say things and do things, and they laugh at us, but you know, it's worth it. It's worth it because the end is life. We have the best company in the world on the narrow road. There may not be many of us, but it's good company. Well, you say, when I get to hell, I'm going to have a lot of company. Let me read to you from Revelation 21.8 the kind of company you're going to have in hell. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's the kind of company you're going to have. Chapter 22 of the book of Revelation, verse 15, but outside, that means outside the city, are dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral, murderers and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. Now, if that's the kind of company you want for all eternity, it's there for the asking. All you have to do is reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Two ways. Has it cost you anything? Then there are two trees. Has it changed your life? That's the whole point of it. You say, well, I trusted Jesus when I was six years old. Did it change your life? Oh, yes, I've known the Lord Jesus for many years. Beware of false prophets, says Matthew 7, 15, who come to you in sheep's clothing. Outwardly, of course, they look like they belong to the Lord, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit you will know them. You see, uh, he's warning here about false prophets. There are a lot of those today. They're, they're on that broad road, and they're saying, come on, uh, I've got the easy way. You can always tell a false prophet. He's got an easy message. He magnifies himself, not the Lord Jesus. His life does not magnify Christ or Christian standards. The fruit is bad. A false peace, a popular gospel, an easy message. And then one day that tree is going to be cut down, thrown into the fire. Now, again, let me repeat. Jesus is warning people who actually think they are saved. There are people on the broad road who think they're going to heaven. There are people who are listening to false prophets, who are a part of a false religion. 
They actually think they're going to heaven. There's no fruit to show for their lives. This is Back to the Bible. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate 75 years of ministry with today's message by Warren Wearsby. Remember, you can always listen to our daily studies online. Just come to our Back to the Bible website, where you'll also find a variety of Bible reading guides and daily Bible studies and devotions. So be sure to visit us. Before we continue today's study, let me encourage you with this reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 11 and 16 through 18. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. To read and reflect on that passage again, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Wearsby was the on-air Bible teacher for Back to the Bible from 1980 to 1990, and it's great to bring you his popular Pictures and Parables series as our way of celebrating the ministry's 75th anniversary. Warren was in Matthew 7, 21 through 29 when we left off, so let's join him again as he asks some probing but important questions about our relationship with Christ. And then he gets to verses 21 through 29 and talks about the two houses. The two ways, did my decision for Christ cost me anything? Or was it just easy believism? The two trees, did my decision for Christ change my life? Is there fruit coming out of my life that glorifies God? Now, the third, the two houses, this decision I made for Jesus Christ, will it stand in the tests of time and eternity? Will it stand? Now, what's it mean to build on the rock? Well, people think you are building on the rock when you use the right religious language. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, use the right language. Talk about salvation. Talk about the grace of God. Sing the songs, you know. That's not building on the rock. Anybody can do that. doesn't mean just using the right words, nor does it mean doing great deeds of religious service. Now, we admire people who do great deeds of religious service, but are they doing it for the Lord? Is it something that's coming out of their relationship with the Lord? Lord, we've prophesied in your name. We preached. Just because a person's in a pulpit preaching and even preaching the Bible doesn't mean he's going to heaven. In your name, we have cast out demons. That's quite a feat. In your name, we've done many wonders, miraculous works. But you see, our Lord says the fact that you're doing these religious deeds, even miraculous deeds, that's no proof you're going to heaven. Somebody comes along and says, I'm going to show you how to go to heaven. But they ignore the Lord Jesus Christ. They ignore the Word of God. They have an easy message. They exploit you. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.